No, Do you guys no, have the same uh, lockdown, no more than 10 people? Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's changed the entire format of what we think is normal now. Yeah. You know, this is this is big event city with the Cowboys playing and the Rangers playing and and all of that is canceled. You know, South by Southwest down in Austin, yeah. one of the biggest music festivals that you know in the in the world is just shut down. It's just, it just is isn't happening, you know, anymore. So this has changed our society. Oh yeah. You know, and but to a point where now the only thing we can do is those that are close to us is, or on FaceTime is connect with people and have conversations. There's nothing else to do, yep. you know? And so, um, you know, so again, not to belittle the suffering that people have gone through, like that family in New Jersey where four family members died of the coronavirus, just one family, yeah. it's crazy. Um, so not to belittle that, but I'm seeing the same reality though, is if we were to, um, apply the same, same principles of connection when things are healthy. What can we do to to increase things and move things forward? You know, and um, you know, it's something that we are losing the art of because our society. I, I, this was something that was interesting to me. Was years ago, probably I don't know, fifteen, sixteen years ago, maybe even longer. I went to the Washington D.C to uh, the ETF, that, what is the name of that? But it's a, it was a real estate development week-long class. Urban Land Institute, that's what it was, ULI. Yep. And, uh, and they were showing the designs of all the homes or this, the condos that they were building at the time. Uh, and they were high-rise you know, condos like on the coast, like on Miami or what, on the East Coast. And um, none of these condos were even built with kitchens anymore. They had little wow. kitchenettes. Yeah, they didn't have burners. You know, they had a microwave, maybe a one burner, just little kitchenette things. And uh, no dining room table or nothing because so many people live alone. And I noticed that um, uh, when I was in Palm Beach just a few weeks ago, a lot of single pay people living alone. And in these high-rise apartment complex, you know, every fifth floor was a dog park or a pet park. And the reason for that was, and this was what was stated by the educators of this class, people don't have any, uh, have limited human relationships now, and their best friends are their pets. So they have to accommodate for that in these high-rise apartment complexes or condos so that, you know, you don't have to go all the way down to the ground floor to walk your dog. So they have these pet parks so they can do their duty down in about every fifth floor or something like that. Because the human relation thing has, has shut down, has stopped, you know. And so I thought that was kind of fascinating that the, even the architecture of what we're doing um, changes. Yeah. Well, you see the amount of money that people spend on their animals, their posts on Facebook. Uh, you know, I love my dog better than I love my yeah. people, or, you know, or whatever. And they isolate even with their animals. Yes. And so it is kind of an amazing thing going on. Yeah. You know, and so coming out of this coronavirus thing, it's to see what, what, what do we do in response? Because like, but because, you know, all those things I just talked about was in the 2000s. But back in the 1960s, you started seeing... Oh, 70s at least, attached garages. And so people would drive home from work and their door, gar garage door would open. They'd drive the car in and then close. And you wouldn't see them again until the next day when they got up to yeah. go to work, right? Because we'd go into our fenced yeah. in yard and we'd stay isolated and disconnected. Um, it's just, you know, one of my favorite shows is the Andy Griffith show, you know, and, and they're sitting on the front porch. Right. That's why it is, yeah. I've been calling this a little bit front porch kind of thing was where people walk by and strike up conversations. Yep. Uh, you know, that culture has gone now. Well, Jane and I have been looking for houses, yeah. you know, for the last couple of years. And I got a little story that goes with that one. But the bottom line is, is that all of the newer homes, yeah, everything faces the back. We want something that faces front, you know, so that we can see what's going on in the street, the sidewalk. And finding something like that means using a bedroom, typically, as an right. office. Right. Yeah.
it's kind of crazy. Now with this uh, coronavirus, which turned out rather interesting, Jane and I found a house in Hiawatha. Yeah. We love it. Price was maybe a little high. We were thinking about making an offer, but then this coronavirus thing took off. And with the instability of everything, you know, can we sell our home? Now it's not acting out of fear, it's just a logical thing. Yeah, sure. need to be, you know. So if they can't sell their home, you know, are we gonna be able to sell ours? It's a very nice home. I expected it to go fast. Of course, it hasn't sold yet. Mm -hmm. And actually they decided to get a realtor because it was for sale by owner and yeah. the price has gone up at this point. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna be watching it. I got a Pepsi bet that like you were talking earlier, the economic situation in the United States is going to change due to people not going out, mm -hmm. uh, not spending money in the ways they used to, like the sporting events, at least for a short period of time. Yeah. Things are changing. Where it's going to lead, who knows? No reason to be in fear, but it's just going to be an interesting development. How is well, society going to respond? We'll see it, but, but fear is the thing. You, you know my view of fear. It is real. You know, fear is not something to understand, it's something to kill. But, yes. because here's the reality, you know, so here the stock market, the stock market has gone from 29,000 or something like that, down to 19,000. So like a third of its value is gone in what, two weeks? Yep. But all the indicators are all healthy as far as it's a strong yep. economy. There was, uh, you know, the, the, the unemployment was incredible. Uh, the raises were strong. Everything was strong. So it, this this crash, and it is a crash, isn't because of any economic indicators. Correct. And, and they actually are saying this. The only reason why this has happened is because of fear. Because yeah. the, the, they don't know what the future holds. You know, all these guys who were just betting the farm a month ago are pulling everything out simply because they're not sure what this is going to lead to and what things are going to look like when we're done. And so the lack of understanding, because we fear the, un the unknown more than anything else. Right. So this entire collapse of our economy has taken place simply because we don't know what's coming. Right. Simply because we are afraid. You know, and don't get me wrong, I, I see that as understandable. You know, I, 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 I totally understand that mindset. I just don't know how healthy it is to, for us to create a stable culture with that being the driving force of everything we do. You know? Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to know more recordings like this that are coming up, subscribe right now and I'll keep a seat open for you on the front porch.